So the year is 1993 and MLB continues to expand its teams as two new National League teams came into play. The first being the Florida Marlins and the second being the Colorado Rockies, the team that we're going to talk about today. And obviously, both of those teams have had their own level of success, I guess you can say. Despite only being to the playoffs four times, the Marlins have won two championships, and the Rockies have also been to the playoffs five times while also winning a pennant. Check swing roller. Tulewitzki. Colorado's the National League champion. They're also the two teams currently in the MLB that have never won their respected divisions. And with the Colorado Rockies, their history is a lot more interesting because they're known for their hitters. I mean, Todd Helton, Larry Walker, Vinny Castilla, Troy Tulowitzki, Nolan Arenado, Dante Bichette. I can go on and on about, you know, their hitters, but their pitching, yeah, that has a lot to be desired. Like, when you talk about their all-time pitching, I guess there's some that you would definitely throw in there, but none of them are exactly what you would say ace worthy and for the most part the Rockies are just lucky to have a pitcher with an ERA of four most of the time and why is that why do the Rockies pitchers struggle so much well when you play half your season in Coors Field things definitely change even though it is one of the biggest ballparks in the league with the way the stadium sits and the air being thinner in Colorado the ball tends to travel more favoring the offense and not favoring the pitchers now the Rockies have tried before to kind of get this in check they've signed Danny Nagel Mike Hampton and Daryl Kyle at one point in time even trotting out Kyle Kendrick for whatever reason and of course None of them have had success, but there are kind of three seasons for the Rockies pitching-wise that stand out. These are the only three times that a Rockies pitcher started 15 or more games in a season and finished with a sub-3 ERA. That means an ERA lower than three. And today we're going to talk about those three guys, kind of go through their seasons in general and where they kind of were after that said season. So we don't have to look far as in the Rockies second year in 1994, there was one man that shot up the rotation for them. So this was something I realized when I was editing, is this first guy we're going to talk about. He did this in 1994 for the Rockies when Coors Field wasn't built. It was built a year later in 1995. I know that's going to be people like, well, he didn't really beat the Coors effect if he never pitched that season at Coors Field. He still pitched in Colorado where the air is thin and the ball travels a little bit more. So just, um, just look at it that way. This man was Marvin Freeman, someone you probably never heard of. And I had to look up his baseball reference while, you know, doing this video. And for the most part, it seemed like he was a solid reliever slash starter for the Braves in the 90s, but nothing spectacular. But in 1994, what he would do in 18 starts with the Rockies, he would go 10-2 and two with an ERA of 2.80 in 112 and two-thirds innings. Now, I know he's... Not necessarily one where it's like, oh, well, he started 30 games, so maybe this is just a small sample size. I get it. But the fact that he's one of three Rockies to just do it in general, it's kind of impressive. I mean, obviously, after an unsuccessful first year in 1993, the Rockies came into 1994, which was the strength year that cut the MLB season short. And, of course, there was no World Series played that year. The Rockies didn't get much better, but they would go to the playoffs the next year, no thanks to Marvin Freeman, who kind of took a step down and then the Rockies would go on a long playoff drought after that so this was just one of those interesting seasons where I don't necessarily know what went right for Marvin Freeman this year but something was clicking and he is known as one of the three Rockies starting pitchers ever to have an ERA under three and 15 or more starts. Then the Rockies would have to wait a little while as they did have some solid seasons from say Jeff Francis and Aaron Cook, but you know, nothing would compare to what was about to happen with Yobaldo Jimenez in 2010. Ground ball to second, Barmas to first, Ubaldo Jimenez has no hit 
the Atlanta Braves. Ever since entering the league in 2007 during the Rockies' pennant-winning season, Yubaldo Jimenez had been a pretty solid starter, I would say one of the best in Rockies history up to this point, as coming into 2010 he had back-to-back -back seasons with an ERA below 4, which again, when you're a Rockies pitcher, that's really good. But in 2010, I don't really think anybody saw this jump that he was going to take that would put him amongst the game's elite. Early on in the season, April 17th of that year, Yubaldo Jimenez threw the first and what is the only Colorado Rockies no-hitter in their history in Atlanta, despite walking six guys in nine innings. And that just seemed to be the start for Ubaldo, as by the All-Star break, he had a record of 15-1. and one. Yes, 15-1, and one. and to this day, he is also the only Rockies starter to ever start in the All-Star game. Now, he would kind of falter in the second half, going just 4-7, and seven, but a 19-8 and eight record and a 288 ERA with 214 strikeouts and just 164 hits in 221 and two-thirds innings is pretty impressive. Plus, he finished top three in Cy Young voting this year, making him the first Rocky to even enter that category. Plus, he's also the closest a Rockies pitcher has ever gotten to 20 wins in a season. Ubaldo Jimenez was kind of one of those weird pitchers where his career actually declined after leaving Colorado, as after having an expected down year in 2011, he was traded to the Cleveland Indians and struggled in his first full year there in 2012, having 17 losses. But in 2013, during Cleveland's playoff push, he won 13 games and had an ERA of 330, and hit the free agent market, where he would then sign a four-year deal with the Baltimore Orioles. And as Orioles fans know, this didn't go well outside of an okay season in 2015. His career ended unceremoniously in 2017, and he is also known for giving up the game-winning home run in the 2016 wildcard round to Edwin Encarnacion, because Buck Showalter wanted to save Zach Britton for some reason. You stupid! Now, believe it or not, it wouldn't take too long for the Rockies to have another pitching season like Ubaldo Jimenez. You do have to fast forward almost 10 years though, as in 2018 the Colorado Rockies were coming off another playoff season in 2017, and we're looking to build upon that. One guy that popped up in 2017 that actually pitched pretty well for a rookie was Kyle Freeland, going 11 and 11 with an ERA of 4.10, which hey, again, Rockies pitcher, that's about where you want to be. But in 2018, he was about to take his game to the next level, and it looked like the Rockies had their ace. Kyle Freeland would go 17-7 and with an ERA of 2.85 in 202 and a third innings, allowing just 182 hits. He was on something else this year. It's him and Yerman Marquez. Both had good seasons, making this Colorado's first really good one-two punch I think they had. But this is also the first pitcher we're talking about that actually got to pitch in the postseason that year. As in 2010, the Rockies did finish with a winning record, but an eight-game losing streak at the end of the year stopped them from going to the playoffs for the third time in four seasons. And as I mentioned with Marvin Freeman in 1994, that Rockies team wasn't good outside of, hey, we can smack the ball on you, plus there was no playoffs that year anyway. So even if they were to be a qualifier for it, it didn't happen. Now, the Rockies didn't go too far, but hey, at least Kyle Freeland's good. He's going to be the race of the future. And then everything kind of tumbled down for Kyle Freeland as he started to pitch like a Rockies pitcher should, very badly. Just a year after finishing top three in the American League Cy Young voting, the next season in 2019, Kyle Freeland would go 3-11 with an ERA of 6-7-3, and since then, it's just kind of been a norm that he just has an ERA over five every year, a losing record. Granted, he's on some bad Rockies teams now and could very well get traded at the trade deadline this season, but the fact that Kyle Freeland went from almost Cy Young award winner to this, like even Ubaldo Jimenez didn't have this big of a downfall that quickly. Like it took him about three years before he really started to hit rock bottom. But with Kyle Freeland, it was like immediate. And the only reason he's seen as the Rockies ace now is because, well, he's really the only one there that can eat innings. So with that, there you go. Those are the three Colorado Rockies starting pitchers with 15 or more starts in a season that had an ERA under three. It's very hard for Rockies pitchers to just come
come in and do this, and it's very hard for the Rockies in general to develop pitching because with the way their ballpark works, free agent pitchers aren't necessarily going to want to come there because they know that if they go there, their ERA is going to inflate and they're going to give up a lot more runs because that's just how it is. I don't think it's anything the Rockies can avoid. There's nothing they can do to their ballpark, and it's not that I think they fail at developing pitching. I just think sometimes it might mess with the development having to pitch in Coors Field for, you know, half the season. It just, you know, the, the Rockies are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, no pun intended. So you can tell me in the comments below which one of these three was the best pitch season in Rockies history. And I know it's pretty much going to be between Jimenez and Freeman, but you can pick and choose which one was better of the two. And like I said, it's sad their fall off after that. But until then, that's it for me. Stay safe out there, and I will catch you all in the next one.